Oh, hang in there, guys. Okay, let's break that one down. This is from the book, again, from the book of Psalms. So you open your book, Psalm 9, 10. Use all of your fingers. Those who know your name, and this is name in sign language, name, trust, like you're holding onto a rope, trust in you. For you, Lord, have never forsaken, and what we're actually signing is ignore never. You, Lord, ignore never. Never. Those who seek you, those who know your name, grab the rope, trust in you. For you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. Psalm 9, 10. Let's try it together. Psalm 9, 10. Just know my name and trust in your will. I think ever me. That was great, Bella.
Hey kids, Pastor Christy and your senior pastor, Pastor Casey. So we're here today because we're going to have a little bit of fun. Okay, Pastor? All right. So I have these words and I have difficulty with words. I just do. Speech I don't know. Mm, no, not that. But someone that we're learning about does because tell them who we're learning about, kids. That's right, Moses. So we're learning the book of Exodus and quizzing this year, Pastor. So I just want to show you something. All right, so I'm going to hold this up so that you can see it. All right, now, I think I can get these, Pastor, but frutile? Frutal. Frutal. Futile. Futile. Okay, do you know what it means? Yes. Okay, what does it mean? It means pointless. Yeah. Okay. Now this one I know. Because this one, that's a good Bible word. That's a God word. Omniscient. Oh. No, it's omniscient. Oh, omniscient. Right? Omniscient. 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 Okay, so I didn't know it. You guys know this because when I get to Bible names, you know. All right. So... Pastor, I, I, okay, I'm going to try it, kids. Here we go. Anthophilius. Did I say it right? No. Okay, so how do you say it? Anthophilus. Oh, Anthophilus. Okay. Do you know what it means? Uh, no. Okay, well, it means feeding upon or living among flowers. That's me. <laughs> okay. So, here's the other one. Okay. Parietal. Uh, parietal. Parietal. Par I don't know. Parietal. Parietal. Do you know what it means? No. Okay. It's of or relating to the walls of, of a part of cavity. I guess that would be like in your teeth. So when you go to the dentist. Yeah, maybe the dentist knows this word. Our last one. All right, Pastor. Conurbation. Con conurbation. That's right, you had it the first time. Conurbation. 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 Okay. It is in a group. A group of communities. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a network of urban communities. He's so smart. Now, do you so say Carmel? Or do you say, that's another one. Deanne's in the background. And Carmel or Caramel? Yeah, I say the Carmel. Potato, potato. I say Carmel. What did tomato, you say? Caramel. See, caramel. That's Jim and I both. Tomato, tomato. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. Anyway, kids, the reason that I'm doing this is because, see, I have a learning disability. I have a reading problem. Reading comprehension, reading pronunciation, or is it enunciation? Pronunciation. Pronunciation. Anyway, the reason I'm sharing this with you is even though I have this problem, often what I do is I use my phone to look the word up and then I'm able to press and it tells me how it's pronounced. I use the things around me to help me. And I have that disability, but pastor doesn't have that particular disability. But that doesn't mean that God doesn't use us. See, I am a pastor, and Pastor Casey is a pastor. I have that disability, but it doesn't stop me from doing what God wants me to do. Actually, Pastor Casey and I both have a disability. We're both showing you that disability right now. And if you can tell me what that disability is on Sunday, I'll give you a prize. However, I think he just cheated, didn't he? I guess you're all going to get a prize. Anyway, we have a disability, but it doesn't stop us from doing what God wants us to do. Today, we're going to learn about Moses. And Moses had a disability. What was it, Pastor? He stuttered. He stuttered. So we're going to learn about that today, but nonetheless, disabilities don't have to stop you from doing what God wants you to do. 
So let's learn about that and I'll see you in just one minute in front of the computer. Hey kids, I'm in my office today and so I've got the computer set up for you and I'm gonna do the slides here and try to get it as close as I can so that you can see um, the computer. So uh, let's do a little bit of a review from dig site number three. Um, scripture last week was Exodus 3.14. It said, God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. And remember, he spoke to him in the burning bush. And the amazing thing was the bush didn't burn. Just there. And then he said, take off your sandals. You are standing on holy ground. And that was the calling of that Moses had when God asked him to uh, be the leader in setting God's people free. And remember, I am still applies today. I am the bread, the light, the door, the good shepherd. I am before Abraham was. I am the resurrection and life, the way, the truth, and the life. I am the vine. And God is everything that we need him to be. So today we start with dig site number four and the memory verse is in Psalms 9 um, and it is starts in verse 10. Chapter 9 10. Those who know your name trust in you for you Lord have never forsaken those who seek you. That's a great scripture isn't it? So let me ask you, I saw this. This is not our advertisement, of course, because it is Northwood Christian Church. And apparently they were doing some type of heroes uh, on part, uh, part three heroes, and it was God can use you. And so they did a sermon series, but I liked this and I liked it a lot because I punched in, in Google images, God can use you. And this came up and I thought how appropriate because when we allow God to use us to share his word or to do something that he needs us to do, we truly are heroes and probably looked upon as heroes in the eyes of God. So it's always great to allow God to use us, isn't it? So with that being said, we learn today that God chooses to use Moses. And our scriptures are in Exodus 4, 1 through 21, and then it goes to 27 through 31. And I want to read some of the scripture to you this week. Normally, I do some little uh, highlights that they have in our teacher's book, but I kind of wanted to read from the scripture today. So chapter four begins and says, Moses answered, what if they do not believe me or listen to me and say, the Lord did not appear to you. So we find that God is calling Moses. That was our dig site last week. And now Moses starts to doubt himself. And have you ever felt that way? I know I have tons of times. Then the Lord said to him, what is that in your hand? A staff, he replied. The Lord said, throw it on the ground. Moses threw it on the ground and it became a snake and he ran from it. I don't know about you guys, but if I had a stick in my hand and I threw it on the ground and it turned into a snake, I would be just like Moses. I'm telling you what, I would be just like Moses. I would run. Then the Lord said to him, reach out your hand and take it by the tail. Okay, again, I wonder if Pastor Christie could take that snake by the tail. I just don't have enough bravery. It would have to be God to help me to do that. So Moses reached out and took hold of the snake and it turned back into a staff in his hand. Now let me tell you, that is a miracle. If I were ever able to witness that, that would be incredible. This, said the Lord, is so that they may believe that the Lord, the God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has appeared to you. Then the Lord said, put your hand inside your cloak, which is inside your jacket. So Moses put his hand into his cloak and when he took it out, 
his skin was leprosous, had leprosy. It had become white as snow. And leprosy, as we learned in our um, sermon series a couple of weeks ago, um, was very contagious. And people who were lepers were not allowed to be around anyone else. And then the Lord said, if they do not believe you or they don't pay attention to you to the first sign, they may believe the second. But if they do not believe these two signs or listen to you, take some water from the Nile and pour it on dry ground. The water you take from the Nile River will become blood on the ground. So I just turned water into, I actually Google water into blood, but actually he took water out and put it on the ground and it turned to blood. So all of these things, he was able to put his hand into his jacket and pull it out and it had leprosy. He was able to put his hand back in and it was clean and clear. He was able to turn water into blood and his staff became a snake. Moses said to the Lord, pardon your servant, Lord. I have never been eloquent, neither in the past nor since you have spoken to your servant. I am slow to speech and tongue. And this is what Pastor Casey and I were talking to you about earlier in our lesson is he had, he stuttered and because he stuttered, he felt inadequate again. The Lord said to him, who gave human beings their mouths? Who makes them deaf or mute? Who gives them sight or makes them blind? It is not I, the, is it not I, the Lord? Now go, I will help you speak and will teach you what to say. And that's kind of like what I was telling you in Pastor Casey's office. I've learned how to deal with, with my disability, my reading disability, God has given me tools that I can use. And so God did the same thing for Moses. He gave him the ability to speak. Then the Lord's anger burned against Moses. And he said, what about your brother Aaron, the Levite? I know he can speak well. He is already on his way to meet you and he will be glad to see you. You shall speak to him and put words in his mouth. And I will help both of you speak and will teach you what to do. He will speak to you. He will speak to the people for you. And it will be as if he were your mouth, as if you were God to him. But take the staff in your hand so you can perform signs with it. Our next picture is a map because this is God saying to him, Moses, go. I have everything that you need. I will provide everything that you need. And so no matter how inadequate you feel, I believe and know that I can use you. Then Moses went back to Jethro, his father-in-law and said to him, let me return to my own people in Egypt to see if any of them are still alive. Jethro said, go and I wish you well. Now the Lord said to Moses in Midian, go back to Egypt for all those who want to kill you are dead. So Moses took his wife and sons, put them on a donkey and started back to Egypt. And he took the staff of God in his hand. The Lord said to Aaron, go into the wilderness and meet Moses. So he met Moses at the mountain of God and kissed him. Then Moses told Aaron everything the Lord had said, sent him to say, and also all the signs he had commanded him to perform. Moses and Aaron brought together all the elders of the Israelites and Aaron told them everything the Lord said to Moses. He also performed the signs before the people and they believed. And when they heard that the Lord was concerned about them and had seen their misery, they bowed down and worshiped. 
kids, we're getting ready to make it real. We get to actually see as God delivers his people out of slavery and into a new life. So um, we have our map and we, like Moses, are ready to go and see what God has. Don't allow your disabilities or things that you feel inadequate about stop you from allowing God to use you. Allow God to use you to share his word. Allow God to use you to be a friend to someone who needs a friend. Allow God to use you to love his people. All right, I hope you do well this week, and I hope that God blesses you as you study his word. Blessings.